Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Catatonia's YouTube channel, starring me, the mighty Crino. This is Bosses Only, the video series where we look at just the bosses from a dungeon. Because you're not stuck on trash, you're stuck on bosses! From the Wolf Hunter DLC, this is Moon Hunter Keep. Why is it called Moon Hunter Keep? Because Moon, uh, yes, that Moon, used to be, uh, back when he had a job, a vicious and ferocious hunter with a gun, and he used to fly through space with his space gun hunting for Jupiters. He would uh, point his gun at them, and then he would shoot them so that they died, and he would load up all his dead planets on his uh, Moon Hunter truck and take them back to his Moon Hunter Keep. This place, the Moon Hunter Keep, so uh, that's why it's called that. Let's uh, get this party started by visiting boss number one, Jailer Miletus. Jailer Miletus has a few nasty attacks. There'll be a spreading AoE around his feet, which you don't want to be stood in because once it reaches its maximum size, it'll explode. That explosion causes a bunch of damage. You'll also, as you've just seen, a whole bunch of streaking poo circles will fly out of it. Ads will also spawn werewolves and archers. They need to be taken out pretty quick as they can wipe the group if they're left to run around. Tanks simply chain them into the boss, let them die in the AoE blender. There are also poo fountains shooting up from the floor every so often. You'll want to kite around those and avoid them. And finally, whoever has his aggro, it should be the tank, will get pinned by the boss once he's pretty low health. And he'll channel a big heavy attack that will outright kill the tank no matter how much health he has. He must be interrupted. Use crashing shock or run up and bash him to prevent that. But other than that, pretty straightforward. So let's visit boss number two over here, the Hedge Maze Guardian. This boss seems pretty straightforward at first, but there's a catch. So begin, tank, taunt him, and take him over to the gate you came in at. That way he's facing away from the rest of the group. He's got a couple of attacks. He'll uh, do an arm gun cannon thing. It's kind of similar to what the lurchers do in March of Sacrifices. You'll want to dodge roll out of that. He's also got a heavy attack that's also a cleave that can kill everybody. You can block it. You can also dodge roll to avoid it. The thing about this boss is once you get him down to about 55% of his health, he's going to become invincible. And he'll also be getting permanently healed by Spriggans hidden throughout the maze. How do we deal with those? Well, the two damage dealers are going to break off and go find them. Stay together at all costs. The reason for this is there are stranglers hidden throughout the maze, which will pick a player up at random and drain their health until they die. When this happens, the other damage dealer must, must interrupt them. You've got to stay together and you've got to work as a team and communicate. Interrupt those stranglers. You can't afford to lose people. So run around, find all the Spriggans that are shooting these little heal bullets over to the boss and keeping him undamageable. Once you've taken them all out, you'll be able to go back and continue damaging the boss. Another move to watch out for is occasionally the boss will stomp the ground and shoot out some grasping roots that will grab everybody, including the two damage dealers. When this happens, you'll find that you are pinned to the ground and unable to move for a moment. All you need to do is dodge roll to break out of that. Once you have got the boss down to 35% health, we're going to have to deal with Spriggans in the maze, healing him and keeping him undamageable once again. So again, damage dealers break off, stay together, and find those Spriggans. Take them out one at a time. Watch out for the Stranglers. If they pick up your teammate, make sure you interrupt to free them. You do not want your teammate getting drained until death. Avoid the roots when you cross back through the main room. You don't want to get pinned by the big strangler boss. Tank, meanwhile, is going to keep him facing the gate at all times. He's going to dodge roll out of the big cone arm gun attack. He'll dodge roll the heavy attacks or he'll just block them. But the boss is pretty much never going to move from that spot. So you're free to simply run around, find all the Spriggans, avoid all the Stranglers or interrupt if you have to. You can actually kill the Stranglers, but all that really does is puts them out of commission for a short amount of time. They'll get up and start again. So once you've taken out the next round of Spriggans, it looks like we still have one alive and we haven't noticed. We need to go around the corner here and get rid of it. There we go. Take out that last Spriggan. And the boss should now be damageable again. Now we are free to finish him off. So at this point, ulti's free. See, Catatonia was picked up by a strangler there. The damage dealer comes over and interrupts with crushing shock to set her free. Lay all your burst on this guy. Let's get him taken down. It's going to be a stack and burn to an execute finish. And he is dead. Congratulations. Loot your lockpicks. And your uh, cloudy poisons of hindrance. And your star metal. And we will make our way through this door to the next boss. Mylene, or perhaps it's Mylene Mooncaller, is a tall, stupid werewolf lady with a very large mouth. How do we deal with her? The usual way. Tank, go taunt her, turn her mostly away from the group. She's got a really big, there it is, channeled heavy attack. You can dodge roll that and not take any damage at all, or you can block it. But whether you're blocking or not, it does a pretty decent amount of damage, so be careful. We've also got a lot of lightning from these shock wardens that spawn during the fight. It works like the core lightning that you will encounter in trials such as the Therian Archive, whereas 
You are be each being targeted. You each have your own lightning bolts coming for you. Try not to stack too closely together because when you do that, the damage from your lightning bolt is hitting both of you. It makes the damage even more damaging. Every so often, Mylene will pounce on somebody and pin them to the ground. When this happens, you have absolutely got to interrupt her because while she has got that person pinned, she is eating them until they die. So be sure to interrupt when she pounces someone. She will also enrage if she is hit by lightning. You can take the enrage away from her by leading her through one of the big AoE lightning pools left by the Shock Wardens. Periodically during the fight, werewolves are going to spawn and run around. You'll need to take those out as well, because they can also do a pretty decent amount of damage. Now you see Mylene just pounced Catatonia, but the tank was very quick to run across the room and interrupt. As long as you stay on top of those interrupts and don't stay too close together, because if you are too close together, she can pounce on one person and pounce everybody near you, which can potentially be bad. So stay spread out. Avoid the lightning, avoid the AoE pools, kill the wolves, and kill this lady as quick as possible. There we go, she is dead. Marvellous. Loot your lockpicks, loot your star metal, loot your manganese, and all the other garbage for decon that you probably don't want, unless it's the Jailer set, which you can give to me. And let's make our way through this door to the next boss. This is Archivist Ernard, a little bit of a tongue twister, let's just call him Edward. Edward's got a couple of ads over next to him, let's kill them as quickly as possible. Kill the one that doesn't transform first, then kill the one that transforms. They'll all transform, but the quicker we take them out, the less of these giant werewolves we'll have to deal with. Watch out for the breath attack and the stomp. Simply dodge roll out of them, stay clear. Get him killed as quickly as possible and we'll begin damaging the boss. Now two pairs of adds like this are going to spawn at roughly every third of the boss's health. Somewhere around the 75% mark, somewhere around, around about 55 and then again at around 35% I think. So all we're going to do is damage the ever-living crap out of the boss and the tank is going to keep his eye out for those adds spawning. Here come some adds now. As you can see, the tank's been picked up by this purple shield thing. Destroy it as quickly as possible or it'll explode and whoever's in it will die. That's one of those moves that goes on a random person. Now the boss, every so often, is going to raise his staff. And as you can see around the room, different squares and triangles and circles are going to appear. And they'll also be flashing above the boss's head until he settles on one. Everybody get to a matching symbol. Communication's going to be critical here. Everybody get to a different, but same as the boss symbol. Nobody be standing in the same one because the first person will live through the explosion. The second person will not. So you all need to get to a different symbol. There are enough in the room. There are some at the top of the stairs, the bottom of the stairs and down the main passageway. Other than that, it's a simple case of stack and burn if you've got the DPS for it. If not, just slow it down. Take it a little bit at a time. Take out the ads when they spawn. Keep your eye on which circle to get in and watch out for the lightning and the shield. With that done, we're going to make our way through this door to the final boss, Vicosa the Ascendant. So let's read this magazine that's lying over here by the door and activate the hard mode. There is a lot going on in this fight. So let's begin. This boss is not a DPS race. You need to take it slow and take your time. You will notice on either side of Vicosa are two large wolves, Ari and Zell are their names, but for simplicity, we'll simply refer to them as the red one and the white one. So how does this work? The two little wolves, or big wolves, are on a chain that is of a shared length. It runs through the wall and I guess under the arena. If one is pulled out, the other is pulled up against the wall and vice versa. So if the tank tries to taunt both, they're only going to come about halfway into the room. So the tank only needs to taunt one. There are two ways of doing this. You can taunt the red one, which will drag the white one up to the wall, or you can taunt the white one, which will drag the red one up to the wall. A lot of groups prefer to taunt the white one and drag the red one up to the wall and take out the red one first, but we do it the other way around. The reason for this, the red one can cause an enrage effect on everybody, but uh, this tank can handle it, so we're just going to do it this way. So once we have taken out the two wolves, they are going to be stunned for a while, and they will both retreat over to the wall. At this point, we will begin attacking the boss herself, but we need to take it slow and only do a little bit of damage at a time. The reason for this is because at pretty much every 5% of her health, some adds are going to spawn. Werewolves, they will jump down from the wall behind us and they are going to make a beeline for whoever has the aggro of the main boss, which of course should be the tank. Now, these are the werewolves that have a pounce attack that is a one shot that can take you out. We'll use abilities like Time Stop and anything else that we can do to slow them down and stun them. We've got to get rid of those wolves. 
So at 90% and at 85% health, ads are going to spawn. We'll get two the first time and we'll get three the second time. Same thing applies. Stun them as best you can. Take them out. Don't let them reach the tank. Once we've finished dealing with the wolves, we're going to be able to damage the boss a bit, but suddenly we'll find that the red and white wolf are going to come back from their stunned state and rejoin the fight. So we'll do the same thing again. The tank will taunt one, the other one will get pulled up against the wall, and we will take care of the one that gets yanked over by the wall. Feel free to use your ultimates on the wolves once they're up against the wall like this, because if you don't DPS them down quick enough, there's going to be an enrage where they will leap into the middle of the room, and it's going to be a one-shot when they hit you. When this happens, you'll need to switch which one is being taunted by the tank. So the tank will taunt the one over by the wall and the other one will get pulled up to the wall instead. Like that. Very important that we DPS them down as quickly as possible. Once you've got them dealt with, again, slow damage on the main boss. The reason for this, again, is because at every 5% of her health, she's going to spawn adds. First two, then three, and they will make a beeline for the tank. Remember, if your teammates go down as quick as you can, get them up. And watch out for this totem right here. Vicosa will pick a person at random to throw it at, and if you are standing in the field of it, you are going to get stunned and feared, and you can break free, but nonetheless, it is quite an aggravating attack. She also does that right up in your face with an AoE coming from her, where she will howl, and you will be AoE stunned and feared. She also throws out fireballs, which you don't want to stand in. You're dealing with all this while also dealing with the wolves. So this is why it's important to pace DPS because of overlapping mechanics. It can get tricky. We've done another 5%, some wolves have come down. Let's time stop them. Let's avoid their pounce attack because it can one-shot you if it hits you. And let's get them taken care of quickly. So again, I will press upon you to remember to pace your damage on the main boss. This isn't a DPS race, and if you treat it as such, you will be overwhelmed with overlapping mechanics. Here comes the next set of ads because we've done another 5% damage. Time stop to stun them, take them out as quickly as possible, avoid their pounces when they are able to move, because it can be a one-shot. Avoid all the damage, and we'll get back on the boss again. Remember, after a short amount of time... The two big wolves are going to come back. Tank will taunt one, the other will get pulled up against the wall and we'll DPS it down as quickly as humanly possible so that we can continue damaging the main boss. These two are priority. You cannot leave them running around because they do huge damage. One shots, pounces, big cleaving attacks. All the bad things you don't want to have to deal with can come from these guys, so take them out when they spawn. Another thing that I forgot to mention, but you can see them there next to the boss, these stranglers spawn around the room. Now they spit poison at you and are generally annoying. You can mostly ignore them, but just remember that they are there. So now that we've got the two wolves taken care of, we'll go back to damaging the boss. A new mechanic is about to come into play because we've just about reached 50% health. And when this happens, the shock wardens from Mylene Mooncaller will enter the fight too. Same attacks as before. Call lightning on people, so don't stack too closely together. AoE lightning pools. Also during this phase, the boss herself is going to be enraged. You can take the enrage away by leading her through one of those lightning pools. A shock warden is actually going to spawn back here near the boss, so once it's dead, the tank simply needs to take her into that AoE shock pool to take away her enrage. But it is absolutely critical that you take out the adds before you damage the boss. The adds are always priority. The werewolves and the shock wardens have got to go. Stun any stranglers on the way if you can. But don't do too much damage to the boss, because remember, the more damage you do to her, the more overlapping mechanics we end up with, as at every 5% of her health, wolves are going to spawn, and at every 20%, I believe it is, her two big wolves are going to stop being stunned and come back and rejoin the fight. You don't want all this stuff going around. So again, we're free to damage the boss, take out any shock wardens, take out any werewolves. And the red and white wolf are back. So again, the tank has taunted one, the other's been pulled up against the wall. Let's dispatch it quickly and then focus the other one down so that they are out of the fight for a little bit. There's a lot of mechanics to be aware of and you have to work well together as a team. Avoid the fears, avoid the pounces, use your time stops to stop those wolves from getting too close to the tank. If the tank goes down, pretty much everything's going to run amok and it is going to be a wipe. So protect the tank so that he can protect you. Now, believe it or not, this fight is about to get trickier still. If it wasn't enough having to deal with these wolves running around and the ads that come down at every 5% and the shock wardens and the stranglers and the fear totems and the howling and pouncing and everything else, our good friend Edward from the previous boss fight 
is about to re-enter the fight too. Here he comes. He'll pop up in the middle of the room doing his uh, rune selection thingamajig. So watch the boss closely. He's the purple guy in the middle of the room. Wait until he settles on a shape and then everybody is going to need to get to a shape that matches the one on him. So we will all spread out. We will pick a corner. This is something you should probably talk about before starting the fight. Everybody's going to pick, say, a quadrant of the room and you're going to hang out there. Again, take out any ads, any shock wardens, and then you can start damaging the boss once again. Now, this is very important. Once you have gotten Vicosa down to 20% of her health, the chains holding her two big wolves, the red and white one, are going to break, and they are going to be free to run around. The important thing to do here is to work as a team, communicate effectively, and not panic. Stay close together, take out any ads that are running free, destroy everything at this point, if you look like you're going to be in trouble, call for help. Let people know I'm being chased by all these things. You really need all these things to be dead before that final execute phase really kicks off because it's going to be bad. So again, keep your eye on the boss. Wait until he settles on a shape and color and everybody get into a matching one, but don't get in the same one. He's picking the triangle this time. We'll each get into one. You don't want to be running around on the floor here because you'll be stunned and eventually you won't be able to move. Edward has finished his move. We're going to finish the boss off. We're just about to hit that 20% mark. The chains are going to break and all hell is going to be let loose. Here they come. Tank, try to taunt and hold everything. Just keep it away from the group long enough that they can focus the boss down. You won't have too much trouble as long as everybody remembers. It's the boss you want to focus for this final execute. Tank will worry about everything else. And well done, she is dead. So loot your lockpicks and your Vicosa mask. We've got a Vicosa mask now, which I believe is a reasonably decent set for a tank to wear. When wearing it, um, it produces a howl that fears your target, kind of similar to one of Vicosa herself's moves. So if you want to stun targets by screaming at them, there's a good set for you. So just remember, effective communication and teamwork are gonna be crucial to beating this hard mode. It's one of the tougher ones, but you can do it as long as you work together and pace that DPS. Subscribe here on YouTube if you like what you see by pressing the subscribe button and then hit that little bell to be notified when we have more videos out. You can also check out this video over here on the right and this one here on the left if you would like to see more of bosses only. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the stream over at twitch.tv forward slash catatonia. And we will see you next time. On bosses only! You scrub?